So tonight we're going to talk a little bit about what's called the Pennsylvania Educational Tax Credit Program. Uh, it's a it's a it's a program in the state of Pennsylvania that's been around for approximately 25 years now. Initially started um, for businesses to uh, move some of their tax okay. money directly to schools. Uh, I don't want, I don't want to get into all the detail, but there are several ways you can do this. Um, um, when I first did it, right? Not only can schools do this, but educational um, organizations can do it, and scholarship organizations can do it. But we are we are one of the uh, schools that do it. So. Um, let's start off with what a donor might say about this. And I wanted to do this because I know Tori is available right now to talk about it. And so Tori, before I get into all the little details, the ups and downs and the good and the, and the not so good of the program, I was kind of curious if you could start us off by just introducing yourself and telling us what inspired you to participate in this program and was it easy so the floor is yours. All right. Thank you, Bob. Chuck and Virgin, just thank you for being here. Um, it's wonderful to have you here tonight. I am just my quick introduction. My name is Tori Atchison. I'm a class of 88 Moravian Academy grad. My mom is 60. Oh, Bob, I should know. 63? I think it's 64, but 63, uh, that might get you into trouble with your mom. Okay. So we'll say 65. <laughs> She's a Moravian, she's a Moravian seminary grad, and both my boys spent some time at Moravian. My oldest was at Moravian 7 through 12, graduated, went on to Lehigh, did great, just got a master's at Cornell, is just on fire and so happy and doing so well. And I think it was all because of um, AP calculus at the upper school just set him up for success in the most amazing way when he figured out that he was actually kind of smart when it came to math. And my little one was at Moravian six through eight, and then wanted to spread his wings and go to boarding school in Austin, Texas to play soccer. And it's fun because the Moravian network, like all, you know, at Lehigh University, which is where he's playing soccer, but it was fun that one of his middle school soccer friends showed up at American when Lehigh played at American last year. So he is still like in the Moravian family, even not having attended the high school. I said yes to joining the board a little over a year ago, which was an absolute privilege for me and an honor to serve on the board for an amazing school that our family is so involved in. And Bob and I started talking about EITC and I was like, oh, this sounds pretty good. You mean I can, I can direct my Pennsylvania tax dollars to Moravian Academy. I was like, okay, done. I went home. I talked to my husband, who's really the one that talks to the accountant. And Ken thought I was smoking something. He's like, what is that Bob Zeiser telling you? He's like, this can't possibly be true. It's got to be complicated. One call to our accountant and the accountant was like, oh my gosh, absolutely. We can do that. And it's just one form that you fill out done. And it's exciting that we're in our second year. I am talking to my dad about making it happen. So it is really um, very easy and it feels so good to direct our tax dollars to Moravian and specifically um, to scholarship and financial aid, which just makes Moravian even better and richer for all the experiences. How much time did it take to fill out the form? Oh, like maybe two minutes. Okay, two minutes. And um, was it was it easy to kind of go through the process? Yeah, you were really terrific in like walking us through it. So this presentation, I I was committed to doing it. We knew we were going to do it, but I think we were on this Zoom like a year ago, and that's when I completed it, and it was super easy. And then what's so nice is the organization that we signed up with was just really terrific in the communications and made it so easy and made us feel really good about making our gift through EITC. Awesome. Awesome. And Adrian, you're involved in this as well, aren't you? Absolutely. Well, it's such an, a great opportunity to take advantage of a program that really doesn't exist in most parts of the country. This is actually the first state I've lived in 
where that had a program like this. And so it was a, a absolute no brainer for me. Now, the thing that was important for me because I work for a not-for-profit is that my husband earns money um, through his business uh, in the state of Pennsylvania. So, you know, as long as he, as long as there's something, and that's, I think, in one of the slides, as long as you have that, then you can direct any amount of your taxes through this program. And we did it last year and we just, um, we just sent actually today sent our check off um, for the joinder that we had already done a few weeks ago for this year. Awesome. Awesome. So let's get into some of the details. And what we'd like to do tonight, both Susan and I will be talking about the program. And at the end, we'll open up some questions, Chuck and Virgin. So you guys can ask what's on your mind and hopefully we'll have some more people. Again, we are recording this because we're going to share it with other people a little later. So on the next slide, uh, we wanted to kind of just explain what the program is. And it's pretty, it's pretty basic. It is called the Educational Improvement Tax Credit Program. Therefore, you now know why it's called EITC. There is a secondary program that works similarly called the OSTC program. So you might see that as well. Individuals have been able to do this for the last 10 years. And initially, back in about 1999, this was only businesses. So for the last 10 years, we now can have individuals like the two of you do this. You can redirect your Pennsylvania personal income taxes to Moravian or any school of your choice, and it must be used for scholarships or financial aid. Keep in mind that it's a 90% tax credit, okay? 90%. So there is a small cost to you, but it's a 90%. So for example, if you have a tax liability of $10,000 or $3,000, whatever the number is, there's a 10% cost to you. So keep that in mind. Pennsylvania allows individuals and businesses to do this to this day. And remember, again, it's not a deduction. It's a state tax credit. Very different. Okay. Yes. I think the tax credit is actually better for you. And of course, you have to have the tax liability, the tax liability in the state of Pennsylvania for your income tax, not your real estate tax, no other taxes, your income tax. Okay. All righty. Um, so I wanted to explain a little bit, and then Susan's going to take over in a moment about what a special purpose entity is. And you're probably curious, why, why am I going to tell you about this? Because the special purpose entity is what makes this possible for individuals. A special purpose entity is really just a pass-through partnership, which has no other purpose except to give you these credits. A little history about these. When this first happened in 2014, schools like Moravian, although we did not do this, um, but many schools tried to set up their own special purpose entities or SPEs. It's very complicated. You have to, you have to do things like give people K-1s, which, which I'll get to later. You have to keep records. These SPEs started all throughout the state of Pennsylvania. And then these larger entities took over many of the SPEs and made these organizations, which we'll talk about later. SPEs are simply nonprofits that administer various SPEs um, at no cost to schools. In other words, the SPEs are, are administered by this one big group or one of many big groups, and it has no cost to Moravian or any other school. Again, a pass-through partnership. It's that simple. Okay? Susan, can you take the next slide? Sure. I want to thank everyone for being on this call. My name is Susan Parent. I'm the Director of Annual Giving and Special Campaigns at Moravian Academy. And I've been delighted to work with Bob for the last four years, helping our families learn about this program so that they can direct their Pennsylvania state taxes to our school. It has made a significant difference in the fact that the load of the annual fund is lightened 
because we can fill the buckets of financial aid through these EITC gifts. So uh, to the question in front of us, who qualifies to participate? Any individual or corporation who pays Pennsylvania state tax is, avail is eligible. Also, individuals who work for nonprofits would not be um, eligible if they only work for a nonprofit. So as Adrian mentioned earlier, she works for a nonprofit, Moravian, but her husband has a business of his own. And because they filed jointly, they are also eligible. Additionally, if you are working for a nonprofit, but you own Pennsylvania stock, you are also eligible. And as Bob said, these SPEs just act as an intermediary and they provide the individuals and the, co and the companies um, the EITs, these, the, the structure and the forms. So you do have to be a Pennsylvania state taxpayer. All right, um, why would you do this? Well, it benefits Moravian Academy. There's a slide in a bit describing how much money we have brought in over the years. It is significant to fill any gaps that there are in our budgets. And so, um, as we've mentioned, donors do receive 90% tax credit. So therefore, Bob, I think use this example, if your Pennsylvania state tax liability is let's say $10,000. That might be a joint income of $200,000. Um, if your state ta tax liability is 10, you, the result is the credit of 9,000. And so your out of pocket cost would be $1,000. So that's why it's so strikingly um, helpful. Your gift to us is 10 times what, your, what it costs you. Um, and so that 10%, the neat thing about that 10%, as we look at larger numbers, maybe you have a business and your tax liability is $50,000. Your tax, uh, uh, so uh, 45,000 of that is your tax credit and 5,000 would be your out of pocket. And so that $5,000, your 10% um, can be used as a charitable donation, a, as a deduction on your federal tax return so your benefit is twofold you yeah get the tax credit and you get the donation deduction on your federal returns yep all right so this is how it works on the left hand side of the screen there is a joinder it's a one page document it's very simple it's your name social security and your estimated tax liability state tax liability you fill that out you need to estimate that taxes. Um, I think an important point here is you can overestimate. That's okay. You, but when you, if you underestimate when filling out a joinder, when you estimate it, that's when they set these tax these uh, credits aside for you. And so, once the tax credits are all claimed, that might be in no, end of November, December. Mm -hmm. We can't go back and get more, and so. Um, it's a it's non committal until they actually get to that next step, whereas you you filled out your joinder and that is a reservation it's on a first come first serve basis. And then you send that form to us to one of us Bob or myself um, and then. A check will be requested of you after they've received the joinder and they've said yep we have tax credits for you. And, uh, and then they send you a K-1 back as proof that you have paid your taxes. Simply put, if you're a W-2 employee, it's very easy to, to estimate your current tax year liability. Mm -hmm. Just look on your, on your pay stub. It'll tell you what it is as of today, and you can just extrapolate that out. If you, if you pay estimated taxes <laughs> quarterly, it's a little different, right? But it's, it's similar. So if you by now, you should have paid three of your quarters, right? So you know what your three quarters are, and you can go for your fourth quarter. As Susan said, if you estimate your number, right, and you decide, you know what, I'm not sure that's going to work for me, you can always give less than what you estimate and you put on this joinder. Mm -hmm. You cannot 
do it the other way around. You cannot say, oh my goodness, I have all this extra money. You cannot go higher. So what we tell people to do is estimate, you know, your, 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 your complete amount, but you can always go lower. Nothing mm -hmm. becomes official, by the way, until you send that check to the SPE. You, if you look on the SPE to your left, you'll see some interesting columns. It says in the middle of the page, it says amount of initial contribution, right? That's where you put the dollar amount of what your estimated tax is. You do not have to fill out both boxes there, okay? Once you fill it out, I guarantee you that our SP that we work with, which is called the Central Pennsylvania Scholarship Fund, will get in touch with you in that second year. And so will we. Down below where it says optional, it, it says that they want to know where do you want that money to go to? We ask that you put the name Moravian Academy and the amount. Sometimes people forget to do that and we have to follow up to make sure that, that the SPE knows where the money goes. If you do not put the, the, the name of the school in there, they will send it where they want it to go. So we request that you put that that the, the, the name Moravian Academy in there. Above, right, uh, you just fill out your personal information. Now, in regards to being safe on a joinder, we can do it many different ways. We do have a safe way, the easiest way to get it to the SPE. We can do it in an encrypted format now as well. All right, so if you have any concerns about that, just wanted you to know that. Here's the step-by-step -step process. So step one, determine your tax obligation to the state. That's all you gotta do, figure out how much do you owe. Number two, fill out the document that is in this presentation and we'll send you copies so you have it. Send it to me or to Susan Parent. And we ask that you send it to us so we can track it through the process, okay? Number three, wait for the Central Pennsylvania Scholarship Fund or one of the other two SPEs we work with to approve your credits. Please keep in mind, the state has a limited amount of credits available. First come, first serve. The earlier you do it, the better it is for you, right? So we don't want anyone shut out who wants to do this. Step four, respond to the email from the Pennsylvania Scholarship Fund and then you need to send them a check. Remember, if you have a number that's like 10, you can always do 10 or less, right? In that scenario, okay? Step five, you receive your K-1 and you file your taxes. So you would do all of this now or in the next month or so. And then in February, March, you get a K-1 from the SPE which you use with your taxes when you send them into the state. Uh, and that acts as proof that you've paid your taxes. Okay. Keep in mind, if you've already been paying your taxes all year round, you will get a lot of money back. Okay. All right. I mentioned the central Pennsylvania scholarship fund because that is one of the biggest ones in the state of Pennsylvania. You'll see two others down below. The Central Pennsylvania Scholarship Fund has a minimum amount of $3,500 that a person can do. That's what they publicize. I will tell you that we've done some that are lower than $3,500 with them. But there's a second one called the Children's Tuition Fund that you can also do, and that has a minimum of $1,000. So imagine this, you can do this if you have $1,000 or more in tax liability, okay, cost to you $100. Nothing better than, than increasing your giving by tenfold to any institution you want. We, of course, want it here at Moravian. And there's a third group we've used in the past, and it's a very good group. It was set up down in Philadelphia. It's called Business Leaders of Catholic Schools. Um, the difference between that one and the other two is that they take a percentage. And we would rather you go through the first two, even though Blocks is a very good organization. Okay. 
So now you're probably curious. This is too good to be true, right? I mean, because that's what I thought when I heard about it. And I want you to know, we checked all around the state. We talked to tons of people. We talked to lawyers, accountants, you name it. We wanted to make sure all of you were safe. Here are the two downsides of the program that I want you to keep in mind. Number one, you must have cash flow to do this. I would never want you to do this if you couldn't write that check and needed the money in the next month or so. I, I don't want you to do that. What I want you to do is consider the idea that when you write the check, when the Central Pennsylvania Scholarship Fund or any SBE asks for it, I want you to know that there is a lag time between the time you write the check and your taxes being filed. And then there's a short lag time after that as well because the Central Pennsylvania Scholarship Fund as, as a, a special purpose entity, they too have to file, okay? So keep that in mind. Make sure you have the cash flow to do it. The second one is what we've talked about earlier. If you work for a nonprofit, make sure, please make sure you have other income that makes this doable. Adrian was very clear. She has a, her husband, Rich, who's a great guy. He, he, he actually uh, makes money through a for-profit organization or business, okay? Because he does that, all of their income fits into the program. Only one of you has to do that. You also can get through mm -hmm. this if you if you have stock in the state for in a company in the state of Pennsylvania. So if you do it like that, you see how little you have to do to make this work. I was talking to a donor just this morning, right? And she bought a few shares from Fidelity of PPL. And she she really wants to do the program, right? She doesn't make a ton of money, but she really sees the, the benefit of taking $100 and turning it into $1,000. So you can do it. But again, please make sure this is covered if you work for a nonprofit. Lastly, which is not on the slide, I would always ask that you work with, if you have an accountant, work with your accountant. Make sure you ask all those questions because again, we're... We are in partnership on this. I want to make sure this is good for you. And of course, I want to make sure it's good for Moraine. So you're probably curious how many people do this at Moravian. Well, here are the numbers. In the last year alone, $1.139 million was raised through this program. That's a lot of money. We had 88 different donors, both businesses and individuals. We have several repeat donors year in and year out. Secondly, since 2014, almost one, I'm sorry, almost 8.5, well, a little more than $8.5 million has been raised for Moravian Academy by more than 209 donors. So we have a lot of people who have done this and they've been successful in doing it and they love the program. Because again, I, I gotta keep saying it. Can you imagine taking something and timesing it by 10? So our goal, our goal, and I'm gonna stop my share now. Our goal is to get as many people involved in this as possible, right? Because the more people that do this, the more kids we can help. The more people that do this, the more resources we can give to our teachers, right? The more people that do this, the better our school can be because we're giving the resources and helping the kids. So I'm gonna stop there. I knew this would be about, I, I hit my numbers, 30 minutes, right? And for Chuck and Virgin, you guys were here in the beginning. Chris, good to see you for a second a second day, a third day in a row. I'm not sure how many days I've seen you now. Um, I, I hope that is extremely clear. And I want to be, I want to say one last thing about it before I open it up to questions. Um, it seems too good to be true. But the reason we started with the two people on the call who have done this is 
because we want you to know it's real and it works for Moravian and it works for all of these schools like Moravian in the state of Pennsylvania. Okay. So I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to try to stop talking and I want to open it up to some questions. And and Chuck, I saw that you're, you're uh, you went unmute there for a moment. Uh, I'm curious, do you have any questions, Chris, Virgin? How about some questions? Chuck went in. He, there hey, he goes. Yeah, Bob, Bob, one question. Um, sure. You know, we do take advantage of some other state tax credits uh, for our taxes. Um, when when you're doing that estimate, are you estimating the entire liability or, or, or are you deducting your other tax credits from that calculation? Well, the and first if you don't, I'll you, talk to the accountant. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah I, for you, I, I mean, I, it's hard to say, but I would I would definitely talk to your accountant about it. Um, okay. You know, keep 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 it keep it. I mean, there are other things going on in people's taxes that obviously I, I wouldn't know much about, but but I think your starting point is is what is your tax liability, and I will tell you um, that uh, for a a person making about a hundred and eighteen thousand dollars, your tax liability is around thirty five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. So just to give you uh, some numbers to give you a sense of what you can and can't do, so. So if, if you're in that range, if you're making about $115,000, $118,000, you're going to have that tax liability anyway. And so the choice is yours. You get, it, you get to make a decision. Do you want it to go to the state? Or do you want to take a little bit of time, right, and send it to a place like, like Moravian? I mean, it's a great opportunity for, for, for all of us to make a difference at a school that we love. At a school where our kids go. Um, for that uh, joinder agreement, is that something found online on um, when you log in? To the well, be, 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 because, thank you, Chris. It's good to be. It's 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 okay to be late. I'm late a lot. Um, I'll and I'll definitely be in touch with you, Chris. Too, Virgin. Um, uh, we're going to send you the form. Yep. Um, what we do, I mean, I, both Susan and I do this on a daily basis. We're in contact with parents and some alums at the school uh, all the time. And we do these presentations one-on-one -on -one too. So mm -hmm. now that I know that you're curious about it, we will send you the information, two documents. One will be the joinder, which you would fill out, but we'll also give you um, our, our two-page document <clears throat> that will explain the program in depth as well. Okay. All right. Bob, you, you mentioned about the, the timing and making sure that there's credits available. Has the program run out of credits? It has in the past, yes. And you know, and every year is a little different, Chuck. I, I must I must tell you it's it's kind of fascinating what happens year by year. Sometimes it depends on when the budget is passed in the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, a bunch of years ago, they didn't pass the budget until I think it was December 26th. Um, and so my week of, of, of December 27th through <laughs> December 31st was quite busy, right? Last year, uh, there, are, there were credits uh, in the middle of December, but when they're gone, they're gone. And the way, the way these SPEs work is they go to people who've already done it in one year and they go to them early. So like in Adrian's case, she's already heard from the SPE and she's already in the process, right? So they go through several rounds of this. Mm -hmm. What we're doing now is we're, we're feeding the second round of it and we should be getting a list from them within the next week or so as to who, who else has, has filled out uh, the documents, the joinder. One of the other reasons I like to have the joinder is because we like to keep track mm -hmm. of what is going in and what isn't so that we can continue to, to raise money for the Academy. So I mean, I'm not sure I answered it, but I, I would anticipate, Chuck, uh, that the, the credits might be done by mid-November. So I always tell people, get in line, fill out the joinder, and then if you change your mind, you can. So get the joinder in, get it to us as soon as you could. And then when, when Central Pennsylvania Scholarship Fund reaches out to you, which they would, right, uh, within weeks of of that joinder being sent to them, 
you have a choice to make. You either write that check, either at the amount or less, mm -hmm. or in some cases you say, you know what, maybe it isn't for this year. Mm -hmm. um, I will tell you that most of the people I talk to um, do the program. Um, but I will I just tell you a quick story about a guy last year. He's I've been talking to him lately. He's going to do it this year. It was December 27th, December, whatever it was. It was late. And uh, I was able to get him the credits because I know the people at the Central Pennsylvania Scholarship Fund. But he had some business things that he needed to do. He was expanding and he said, I really want to do this, but you know, this may not be the time. I said, not a problem. Let's do it next year. And so he's on, he's on board now. I will also tell you there's a spring version of this as well, which is a lot smaller. We like to do it in the fall, but if somebody wants to fall into the spring, they can. But remember, when you do it in the spring, you're estimating for that tax year, right? So if you do it in the spring of 25, it's for the tax year 25. I find that difficult because I don't exactly know what my tax liability is going to be in that year. Whereas if I do it in November, I have a better sense of what it is. So I like doing it in the fall. Thank you. You're welcome. I heard some, ch some a child in your background, Chuck, before I, um, <laughs> it's probably close to bedtime, I'm sure. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I bet. No, I remember those days. Uh, Chris or Virgin, other questions you might have? No, no, that not right now. That was very informative. Thank you. Was it good? Yeah. <laughs> it was good. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Well, those those folks on the call, you'll hear from us tomorrow. We'll send out those joinders and uh, we look forward to hearing from you. And for anyone who's listening to the recording, uh, sparent at mml.net, bzizer at mml.net. We look forward to hearing from you.